Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember, we're we're here here for for you, and and we've got your back.
something sweet to
presence, Lord, now feels this place, that's what we need, this place called the earth, this place called the seven continents of the earth, this place This place called uh, the United States of America. Feel this place. Called uh, Alabama. Feel this place. Called Jefferson County. Feel this place. call Birmingham, wherever you are and what city you're in. Feel this place. Hallelujah. Call whatever community you are in. We're in West End. Feel this place. Your residence, right where you are, right where you are. Feel that place. Hallelujah. I'm going to shift here. Uh, I already feel an assignment carry, I, if you will, yes, yes, I already feel the assignment. If you'll take this, I, I feel the, uh, the healing anointing in this place today. I, with numbers spiking and out of control and hospitals are overflowing, I would be remiss to preach anything other than that. I wouldn't be worth the salt of my bread. If we still are the salt of the earth, light of the world, uh, we need the glory of the Lord to rise. I heard that as you were singing. Uh, Lord, say, I want you to be, uh, come on, right in my face. I want you to be the, the anecdote. I want you to be the antithesis of the spiking and the rising. Crime has been rising all over the nation. Unemployment has been rising. Temperatures have been rising. COVID has been rising. Death, the numbers of death has been rising. But let the glory of the Lord. I got a prayer today. So let the glory of the Lord So let the glory of the Lord So let the glory of the Lord I need something else to rise in the earth Rise among us let the glory of the Lord yeah, rise among us. Let the praises of our King yeah, rise among us. Let it rise. <laughs> it's just a prayer. It's just a prayer. I, I, I heard the Lord say, Steve, I don't even want you to play with notes. I don't, I don't need you to, to any way entertain at all. Uh, I need you to release what only God can do. Uh, I'm going to release uh, what I call uh, a death exemption. Uh, a death exemption. Uh, a death exemption right in my eyes. A death exemption. Uh, everyone, everyone that has died. Uh, a death exemption. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let the glory of the Lord, 
Let it rise among us. Come on, singers. Let the glory of the Lord. If I can have the, the picture on the screen for me, the main screen. Let the praises of the our King rise, rise among us. Let it rise. Let's just go there for a moment. Since we know what the assignment is, we need something else. Let the glory. Let the glory. One more time. Let it rise. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King. Just make that a prayer one more time. Let it rise. Rekete, reka. Hear that sound. Let the glory. Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord. More than a song, y'all. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Among us, Alabama. Let the praises of our King. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let me hear the war cry in the, in the place. Somebody cry out. Where's the rise at? I wonder if the glory's gonna rise. Huh? 
weeks uh, will the number of cases rise? Uh, how many weeks uh, will unemployment rise? Uh, how many weeks will homicide rise? Come on, I hear you. One of the ways that God uh, allows the instrument, the, the glory to rise, uh, is through instrumentation. Come on. Please let it rise. Somebody say that's just music. Oh no, baby. <laughs> let the high praises of God. Uh, Psalm 149 uh, says, when you let the high praises of God uh, be in your mouth, uh, it's like a two-edged sword. Uh, Psalm 149. I'm just gonna flow and give a few scriptures in a moment. I don't know. I just got this one out when when they got up. So I, I know where I'm going, but I don't. <laughs> I know I have an executive order. Hallelujah. Psalm 149 says, uh, let the high praises of God uh, be in their mouth. Elder Thompson, you nailed it right. Uh, we brought the Ark of the Covenant uh, back in the stage. Uh, that's what the glory is all about, all the glory of your presence. And whenever the Ark is present, everything that the devil has been trying to kill, every form of death, every kind of death, death of physical bodies, death of churches, uh, death of nations, uh, death of houses, uh, death of families. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand, the scripture says. Now what does that mean? When you got that high in your mouth praise in your mouth it does something it executes you see it on the screen it execute praise is an executive order but it comes from the ceo of the universe and he said that the praise fill the atmosphere it's too many other things filling the atmosphere mass trying to exempt us from what's in the atmosphere and we need those things. We need the vaccines. But don't leave praise out of it. It execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment. Type in, I'm getting ready to punish the enemy with my praise. I'm getting ready to punish the enemy. To execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishments upon the people and to bind their kings with chains. We're gonna shackle. Cancer is like a king without Jesus. But we're gonna shackle it. Poverty is like a king without Jesus. But we're gonna shackle it to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And watch what it says. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. That's what we're about to do. And we will continue to do that as the Lord makes the word very clear. I want to move into some things now. Singers, don't go too far. Keep your mics by you because... You know, telling where we might end up singing in praises and that kind of thing. I, I have an assignment this morning. I don't have a sermon, and I had a sermon on my notebook. I had a message, but didn't take about five minutes for the sermon to change to an assignment. And I want to make sure I do the assignment. I talked about this on this past Wednesday night that... There are sometimes there's so much facing us that what we really need is to call on the name of the Lord. Romans 10 says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're going to call on him. But we got to know which dimension to call on. I mean, if you want to call on Pastor Green, there are people calling me. I'm going to really need the camera to be steady tonight, y'all. Yes, please, uh. Uh, to call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Of what name? In this particular season, people are searching for answers. They're searching for answers because we're facing troubles like we've never seen before. Now, when the tribulation period happens, and I want to get eschatological here, but I'm going to release some stuff to you that's going to be prophetic, but it's going to be uh, ecclesiastical at the same time, which means it's going to be eschatological, which it will, I, I will point out end time truths, but no word of God is of any private interpretation and no dispensation is, is of any private interpretation. What I mean by that is whatever's going to happen dispensationally, even with the end times, can happen now. We see that with, uh, with Elijah. The Bible said he didn't die. He was just taken up bodily. That's what the word rapture, you never see the word rapture it, uh, mentioned as rapture. It just says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and he will call us up to meet us him in the middle of the air. It means to be snatched up bodily alive from the earth into another realm. But my earlier studies served me right. That's what a rapture is. It's to be snatched up bodily alive into a whole nother realm. Now, raptures were not supposed to happen until the end of the church age, but yet we see Elijah getting a rapture before time. Enoch did the same thing. He walked with God and he was not for God, just took him up. Only one person made that trip, just like people are going to space. They just send a few at a time, and I just think they're just practicing uh, getting the body of Christ ready to be snatched into the air. They're just going with a few rich folk right now, but all of this is preparation, boo, <laughs> because one day the whole mothership is coming. God's going to snatch us all up, and it ain't going to cost us that. They're just getting us ready to be, uh, to, <laughs> to, uh, be <laughs> uh, snatched up into another realm. But in the meantime, uh, I want you to know that while you are in your physical body without dying, is it okay that God go get ready to snatch you into another financial realm, into another health realm? In other words, to, to deliver you from the realm that you are living in, uh, that the atmosphere that you're living in, uh, I suspect and surmise today uh, that God wants to uh, to rapture you so that a rapture means you do not experience death, is exemption from death. That's, uh, that's why I'm talking about death exemption here. I just got this message about uh, 15 minutes ago, exemption from death, but not just death of the body, death of your job, death of your destiny, death of your family, death of your finances, death of your future, come on, to be raptured. But in order to do that, the gifts that we need when, uh, uh, when we begin to get things predispensationally, in other words, they happen before time. God allows us to get a preview. It's almost like uh, in the sporting games, they have a preseason. They're not the real games, but they, they, they play those games to get ready for when the real season starts. So I think we might as well go ahead and, and experience uh, uh, somewhat of we're in what I call a tribulation period. There will be seven years, according to the scriptures, that after the church is raptured, uh, called the tribulation period. Well, we're kind of having a preseason of that. We are in a tribulation period right now. We're going through all kind of trials. Jesus said it would be so in John 16, 33. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. <laughs> You're in a tribulation period. Sometimes I've been in a tribulation period. But remember, it's a period. It stops. It's not a coma. It has to stop. It's a tribulation period. Amen. So uh, he says, uh, these things are right. And have spoken to you on the screen that in me you might have peace about it. Don't worry about it. In the world you shall have tribulation. There's a colon. What does that mean? Uh, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Anything that will happen to you in the world after my absence, Jesus said, I have already overcome the world. The Amplified of that verse says, I have conquered it for you, and I have deprived the world of its power to hurt you or to harm you. I believe it is. Uh, I have, the, you know, it says, uh, in, uh, I, I have told you these things uh, on the screen to me that you might have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you shall have tribulation and trials and distress and even frustrations. Many are frustrated. But be of good cheer. Take courage, 
<laughs> it's not going to be given to you. You just got to take it. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted, for I have overcome the world. What do you mean? I have deprived it. I have deprived it. I have deprived it. I have deprived the world, not sleep deprivation, <laughs> uh, trial of, of defeat deprivation. I have deprived it of the power to harm you, and I have conquered it for you. I have conquered everything that whatever you would ever face in the world. Jesus says, I have conquered it. Well, we're going to see, according to the scriptures in Daniel chapter 12, which is an apocalyptic book. One of the news anchors and, and, and some of the weather, they were talking about all of the problems that's going on at one time, same as simultaneously in the world. And they, they just said, man, this stuff look apocalyptic. It's just the kind of things we're having, one strain after another, uh, Afghanistan uh, being uh, invaded and the Taliban, all of that stuff, fires. This is, this is pre-apocalyptic. That means the, the end of the world, apocalyptic. But Daniel, the book of Daniel, I've said this many times, but I really need to, I really need to be saying this now. Out of Daniel and out of Malachi, uh, I will kind of go interchangeably between those that's uh, key thoughts. To those that fear his name, it's going to say in Malachi, shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. Now, that's the last day's book. We already know that. We already know that. Peek at that quickly, and we'll go over uh, to Daniel chapter 12, where he says, there is a place where nations face troubles like they've never seen. Israel as a nation have had trouble and became a, a, a nation in 1948, but it's theirs in Jacob's time of trouble, that nation will face trouble like it has never seen. But we get in the preview because our nation is facing stuff that we've never seen before. Daniel writes about these. And the apocalyptic book means that it wasn't just a story about Daniel and the Hebrew boys for that time. Uh, it was uh, written... <laughs> Right? Uh, it was written as a harbinger, as an uh, uh, omen, come on somebody, futuristically speaking of the things to come. Everything in that book speaks of what's coming and what would happen to the body of Christ. Now Malachi says in chapter 4, uh, we'll pick it up, uh, uh, verse 2. Let's pick it up in verse 2. It says, uh, for unto you that fear my name. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a bad place to go uh, verse 1 since it starts with a conjunction. It says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh, shall burn them up. So there's some folk going to get <laughs> burned up, cooked. They're just not going to be ready. they just, I'm sorry. It's, and I'm not talking about, uh, uh, this is not a fire and brimstone going to hell message. I'm just saying this last chapter of Malachi is the last thing that God says in uh, Malachi. He says, I'm going to send in chapter 3 the messengers of the covenant. I won't have time. If you're reading Malachi 3, 1 through 7, before you get to verse 10, that says, will a man rob God? Aren't you glad that preachers know how to preach some out of Malachi other than tithes and offering? <laughs> I'm not even talking about tithes and offering. Verse 1 through 7, he says, I'm going to send the messenger of the covenant that will prepare the way. And if you drop on past chapter 10, will a man rob God? I will open up the windows of heaven. I will rebuke the devourer. Don't, uh, you know enough about that. You know not to mess with the tithe or you'll be cursed with the curse. But curse with the curse was just what would happen the first time for mishandling God's money. But that was chapter 3. We failed to go to chapter 4 where he really wants to release healing in the atmosphere. We need that right now. Right? God has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in season. He says, Steve, you can just about teach anything out of the Bible you want to, but it won't be in season right now. When everybody's watching the numbers in hospital, I need you to wax eloquent out of your spirit uh, to, to give an answer and give, give hope. Because a lot is going on in the world today. Call, I'm calling it death exemption. I'll tell you why. And he's the only one that can guarantee us exemption. And that's why we need to call on him. And there's a particular name we need to call on, Jehovah Shammah, which means uh, the Lord is there. But not just there, but he's there in Ezekiel, as we perhaps may look at in chapter 47, when it says uh, there was a river flowing through the sanctuary. And, and, and that, that river was flowing. Uh, everybody that passed through lived. 
and it provided water to the trees and that uh, caused the leaves to be green. And the leaves on the trees were for medicinal uh, purposes. It was for healing for the nations. And by the time you get there at the end of Ezekiel 48, verse number 35, it was said, and when that glory started rising in the church first, the name of that city, when they measured it by a thousand cubits, you know, there's great measurements going on right now. Census is going on about Alabama, Birmingham. Is Birmingham the largest city? Is, you know, uh, Huntsville now the largest city? Is it larger than Birmingham? They're measuring it now. They're measuring, uh, I, I think, uh, Oxford has become, in the Birmingham area, they have surpassed Aniston now. We're seeing some cities being overtaken because that which was first is becoming last and that which is last is about to become first. Uh, I want to tell you, you're getting ready to pass by some folk. That's what's going on. In it. You, 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 you were last. Nobody knew you. People, and I love Birmingham, and I, I pray that we continue to rise. But the only thing I can guarantee you that's about to rise is the glory of the Lord. But God will always allow, allow sin to move first. Sin abounds, Romans 5, 20, then grace. It sets the bar. So this is very, very important here. But when you get to Malachi chapter 4, he says there are some. That will literally be burned by the glory of God. The purposes were not right. It'll happen to them. But you don't have to be in that number. That's why the next verse will say, But unto you that fear my name, you that worship me, shall the son of righteousness arise. <laughs> That's what's getting ready to rise. But not for everybody. Just for those of you. I'm not saying that's been vaccine. We all need it. Not just for those of you that wear masks, but for those of you that fear my name, that understand worship, shall the, watch this, the S-U-N of righteousness arise. That's what we, and he's going to rise with what? Healing in his wings. I know you go to the average hospital and you go to the west wing and it's full. And you go to the south wing and it's full. And you go to the east wing and it's full. Uh, if you give on an airplane, uh, whether it's Delta, no pun intended, you know that things are going on there. I won't mess with that. Amen. But it's full. But I want to tell you that God has prophesied that there is a day coming uh, when God arises and when he comes in, healing will be in his wings. Uh, oh, that's why the healing, the healing uh, is not uh, in the Tylenol, not, not, not alone. Uh, healing is not in the radiation, not alone. Uh, the healing is not in surgery, not alone. Uh, the healing is not in the finest of the police, not alone. Uh, the healing is not in your education, uh, not alone. Uh, but I'm going to show you out of Timothy, it says, uh, blessed be the only potentate who alone, who only have uh, immortality. He's the only one that's got exemption from every kind of death. Preach Pastor Gray. Says, and the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stalls. As calves released from the stall. But watch what it goes on to say near the end. It says, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And he goes on to say, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded uh, unto him, unto Horeb, when they were coming out and the glory of the Lord. You know Mount Horeb there uh, when they were going from Egypt uh, into the promised land and the statues and his judgment. And one of the statues that God gave, I won't have time to look at, one of the statues, you'll see that in Exodus 15, uh, verse number 25, 26, and then said, the Lord made a statue forever. And he named that place at Horeb. He says, I am the Lord that healed thee. So I'm not just talking about physical healing. I'm talking about financial healing. I'm talking about political healing. I'm talking about spiritual healing. 
I am the Lord, Jehovah Rapha, that healed thee. I am that I am. He told them these will, this will be statues, right? It's on the state book, S-T-A-T. It don't matter about your status. It doesn't matter about your stature, how big people see you, if you're not in the right state of mind. He says, I will with the statue that Moses told you and with judgments. But watch what it says here. Behold, I will send you. I will send you. This is what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do in the last days when I release you, I'm going to send you. And God's going to get quiet for a moment. I will send you Elijah. When I say for a moment, after these next verses, when we get to verse 6, there will be 400 years of silence in the intertestamental period. God says nothing for 400 years. Not one word. There's not one prophecy. There's not one prophet. No song. No preaching. No intercession. God goes completely silent. It's almost as if God drops the mic right there. When God sends us something that we're not familiar with in our lives, in our churches, in our society, <laughs> It's like God said, I ain't got nothing else to say. I'm going to send you the spirit of Elijah, the prophet, the prophet. Bear that in mind, because when there's great trouble over nations like never before, it's not the president that you need. Uh, it's the prophet that you need. It's because it's God said knowledge is going to increase when there's trouble, but they're going to reveal my purposes. So we need right now to hear the prophetic voice. It says, before that great and coming day, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. So you mean to tell me he going to raise Elijah from the dead? Elijah didn't die. He was just a rapture, but God going to send him back? No, that's not what he's saying. He says what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the same spirit that Elijah operated in. And what Elijah did was he spoke and controlled the heavens. He said when it would rain and when it would not rain. God give us more atmosphere changers. That's the spirit. One that can sing until the atmosphere changes. One that can play until the, the atmosphere changes. What's in the air changes. That's the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of power. But we don't want the spirit of Elijah. We want the spirit of Moses. Give me ten more commandments. We want the spirit of Joseph. Oh, uh, repent, repent here. No, no, no. As pure as Joseph was, fled temptation. God never said he's sending that again. As, as, we don't want uh, the spirit of Elijah. We want the spirit of Moses, commandments. We want Joseph fleeing temptation. Or we want the spirit of Solomon. I built the biggest church. He's not sending the spirit of Solomon again. It won't matter how big your church, because all of them are empty right now. Am I right? We've been building the whole thing. So he so said, the last thing I'm going to do is send the spirit of Elijah, Eli. Ja, Eli, right? Eli, meaning my God. Ja, meaning Jehovah. I'm going to send the spirit that will make you call on your God, who is Jehovah. <laughs> You're going to have to call on Jehovah. Ain't no God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes. I'm going to send for the spirit of Elijah, the prophet, uh, before the coming of the Lord and that dreadful a day of the Lord. Watch what the last verse says. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. If we don't get that thing going, if our heart is more about our building, more about our community, we need that too. More about our finances, uh, more about our fashions. If our heart is not turned to the Lord, uh, we are proclaiming a self-proclaimed curse. Notice the last word he says, uh, lest I come and smite, watch this, the earth with a curse. The earth, the earth with a curse. Last thing he said, this is not a doom. He said, if we don't get that spirit in there where we turn the heart back to the Father and not about what we do and how much we make, he said, I'm going to smite not the world. The world is cosmos, the systems. I'm going to smite the earth. I'm going to put some stuff in the earth that you can't get off of you. There are things happening in the earth like we've never seen before. 
Now this is a, a, you know, because of the apostolic mantle that rests upon my life. I, you should be knowing that by now. At any given time, I can flow in and out of any of the five gifts. Teaching the Word of God, did that Wednesday night. Pastoring, been doing that for 36 years. Amen. Apostle was a founder of much of the move of God here in Birmingham. That means ain't nobody, so I can go in and out of that. Prophetically today, that's what I'm operating in. I want to deal and answer some of the questions, and at the same time, the answer the question that's being asked, but release an anointing of healing of everything that's trying to die in your life. Lest I smite the earth with a curse. Now, go to Daniel, that apocalyptic book, and we'll go in and out of that. We'll head to 1 Timothy chapter 6 that tells us, that we must fight the good fight of faith. But we stop reading in 1 Timothy 6, uh, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. But if you keep reading there, you'll find something about God the potentate, God the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's in that calling on him that we get exemption from death, or I call it death exemption. I don't care what's trying to come against you. Now, here's what's going to happen during the tribulation period at a time. Not, not, not in its full-blown capacity, but a particular time is coming that God says about Israel. At that time, shall Michael, that's the warring angel. That's not the United States Army that pulled out of Afghanistan. We got to put, not, not that. At that time, Michael, not Gabriel, the one that brings good news and, and says Jesus shall be born, but Michael, the warring angel. It says, at that time, shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standed up for the children of the people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Watch these words. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was, was since there was a nation. A time of trouble like there never was since there was a nation. Somebody said, I ain't got to go to time of trouble since never there was a nation. I'm feeling, I, I see some things going in, as I hear y'all say, in my job that I ain't never seen before, in my family, with my children, since we became a family. This is what God say will happen to his people. You ain't never seen nothing like this before since there was never a nation. Now watch what it says. Even to that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be, I love this, but at that same time that there's trouble in the nation, <laughs> oh, you see where I'm going, he's going to separate, thy people shall be delivered. Well, somebody should have typed in that I'm part of his people. Thy people shall be delivered. That's why he makes statements out of Chronicles at the same time that God is building a beautiful edifice that, day, that Solomon has built through the uh, connections of his father David. They dedicate the building. Second Chronicles, the glory of the Lord fell so the priest could not stand to minister. They dedicated the building. But when you get to 7, chapter 7, don't go there. God talks about his people. He say, it's going to be some stuff going down, but he says, Second Chronicles chapter 7, Verse number 13 and 14, if I shut up the heavens, if that there be no rain, if I send pestilence among the earth, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek from their face, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will we hear from heaven and he will heal our land, which is to say, our land is not going to get better until we heard from heaven. We, we got to hear from heaven now. We done heard everybody else. We done heard from CDC. We've heard from the schools. Uh, we've heard from preachers. We need a word from heaven right now. It says, and uh, uh, my people will call, and I will heal their land. It says, uh, even to that same time, and at that same time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. <laughs> Sign me up, they said. You better make sure you're written in the book if you're going to get past the stuff that's happening, not only eschatologically in, in Israel, but what's happening in the world today. You better make sure your name is written in the book. And But at the same time, many of them 
that sleep in the dust. So a lot are going to bite the dust. Some are going to die. <laughs> Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. They didn't go by way of rapture. And some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. They were always in contempt of court. Ain't going to get too many amens today, but it's going to be good. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they will turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. I want to tell you, in the backdrop of all the national problems, unprecedented, unmatched problems, I need you to see the positive. You need to be getting ready. If you're having trouble like you ain't never had before, you get ready to shine like you have never shined before. Amen? The more trouble, the more you shine. That's what Psalm 141 says. Oil that makes uh, the, the face to shine. So the more the world gets dark, uh, the greater greater. It's our hour. It's your time to rise and shine for your light has come. You're going to shine like you've never been shining before. They shall literally says, but thou, please go back one more verse for me. I don't want quite, uh, yeah, you shall shine. They shall turn many to righteousness as the stars of ever, uh, forever and ever. Can I just, if nobody told you, can I tell you to get ready, all your uh, cousins, all your next door neighbors, all your haters, that revival is getting ready to break out? Can I tell you, when God gets ready, uh, releasing trouble like this nation, people are already asking questions. The, it, many people going, I mean, it's getting to that point right now. You know, they were hesitant about the vaccine, but the more the things get, get darker, many, why well, it says, many shall turn to righteousness, uh, and they will shine as the stars forever and ever. But here's what he says to Daniel. I love this. Here comes the good part. I'm going to get to the prophetic here. says, but Daniel, I know you think you're writing this for you. I want you to sh literally shut up the words. These are what I'm telling you. Shut them up. Lock them up. Seal the book even to the time of the end. So everything, Daniel, that you hear me saying, shut it up, seal it, because at the end time, this is going to make a whole lot of sense. That's what we are. Shut the book up, Daniel. Put it away. Put a seal over it. Because in the last days, seven seals shall be broken. Seal it to the end, end time. What does that mean? There's a colon. If you sleep, wake up right now. When you seal it, at that time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So much trouble, people are going to be going everywhere. Palmas and, and you know, uh, uh, Dear Abby, all kind of folks. They, wherever they can get a word, they, they, they go everywhere, every church. Is, uh, uh, just What this preacher got to say, just running toss to and fro. Many going here and there, and shall search anxiously they're looking for now and knowledge shall be increased now the knowledge give me the amplifier of that verse right there what kind of knowledge is he talking about and i'm about to when i'm through healing it's going to be released i promise you there's going to be a healing anointing when i get through with this what, what kind of knowledge <laughs> technology knowledge of the scriptures knowledge of ceos fortune 500 who you know knowledge shall be increased is that what he's talking about no, watch the Amplified Bible. He says, but you, O Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book. Notice, book is capitalized because it's talking about the Bible. Until the time of the end. Then many shall run to and fro and do what? And search anxiously through the book. Oh, God, did, did God ever say anything in the Bible about this? Or they wasn't studying the Bible, but now all of a sudden you're trying to figure it out. God prophesied there was a day that there would be a famine of the Word of God. People ain't got time for the Word of God. But when the stuff breaks, you're going to start trying to find the prophets just like Herod did. When Herod saw that his kingdom was about to be shaken and Jesus was about to hit the earth, he got anxious. Uh, he called for the wise men, did he not? He called for the wise men to say, uh, tell them that say, is there anywhere in the scripture that prophesies uh, of a king? Now he wants to know because his kingdom was about to fall. Now when we see things falling, we, we run 
uh, through the book. Then many shall run. They ain't just running <laughs> through the book. We so busy, we're running here and there. We got to go to Broadway. We got to go to Mexico. We got to go to the ball game. We going everywhere. But baby, when God shuts it down, uh, you're going to start running back to the book. Many shall run <laughs> to and fro and search anxiously. There it is again, capitalized, through the book. Now, King James says knowledge shall be increased. What kind of knowledge, PG? That last line. Knowledge. Next page. Knowledge of God's purposes as revealed on the screen by his prophets shall be increased and become great. That was a time we had so many jack leg prophets pimping God's people, charging them for the word, that nobody even believed in prophets. But when you got trouble, what you need more than anything else is the prophetic office. Knowledge as revealed about God's purposes, revealed by not his pastors, not by his evangelists, you read it on the screen, not by the teachers, but when, you, when a nation is in trouble, we need prophets like Dr. King. I have a dream. We need, we need some prophetic insight that is getting ready to increase. So if you've been one that despised prophesying <laughs> and all you wanted was just two points in a sermon, you about to be in trouble. <laughs> I want to tell you because there's some stuff coming that somebody's got to have a direct line. And I'm not trying to say I'm the only one. That's the spirit of Elijah. Remember you told Elijah? He said, man, I got 7,000 people. So there's no one person getting ready to do that, but there are some out there that can tell us what God is doing. And they, ain't, they don't owe you a cute sermon that's going to tell that, that you can put uh, on a CD or pop, whatever, MP3. They're, they're not, come on, somebody. God is, all they want to do is tap the heavens and say what God is doing. Now, let's go to 1 Timothy as we, we're going to end in Ezekiel talking about this healing anointing here. Because if you don't get healed, if your finances don't get healed, anything that don't get healed either dies or it is raptured. Amen. It's not that people are afraid, so to speak, of COVID. It's not the COVID that they're afraid of. <laughs> it's what happens if the COVID don't get better. It's the death. That's God is. Amen. It's not afraid of losing a job. It's the fact that if I don't get no job, I ain't got no money, that means my house going to die. It's the results that happens after it dies. Now, let's reveal something here. Let's go to this, this uh, sonship book. <laughs> there are two things going to be important, prophets and sons. Right? It's the son of righteousness, S-U-N-S-O-N. Paul is writing to his son, Timothy, that's what it's about. Every time you see a name book with somebody's name, it's, it's, it's a pastoral epistle. These are pastoral. Timothy, right? That's Paul's true son. You see Peter. When you tell Peter, uh, that's a pastoral. Pastor Peter, right? Cast all your cares. I know we use cast all your cares uh, upon the Lord for he cares for you. We use that in conjunction with our daily necessities. No, no, no. He was talking to young preachers that was too anxious to be moving out in ministry before time. He says, you young ones, he, you better cast that care on the Lord for he cares for you. Amen. That's a whole nother lesson, a whole nother time. He's writing to Timothy. Titus, he left him in Crete. Pastoral epistle. All these are uh, pastoral epistles. So here's what he says. He wrote to his son Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1. And death is in the atmosphere with Timothy. But it's not the death of COVID. Everybody that was preaching the gospel in the atmosphere, you better not call the name of Jesus. Because if Nero heard it, you died. And Timothy said, I'm out of here. And God told him in 1 Timothy 1 and 3, abide still at Ephesus. But when you get to the end of the book, in 1 Timothy 2, after he's told him the to we make prayers and intercession for kings and authority that we may lead a peaceable life, quiet life. The realm is quiet. One of the successes, listen to me, one of the success, successes and the barometer gauges and the litmus test of a king in First Kings, you got all these books, we got to read them sometime, Kings and Kingdom, is when he got to the end of his reign, they say, and there was quietness in the realm. 
he, he was judged by how much quietness is in the rim. Now, I'm not, you know, I know this is an election week coming up in Birmingham this week. We got several that are running, you know what I'm saying, and some we don't know anything about. But what you judge it by is their quietness in the rim. And I'm not sure if anybody can bring quietness. When we talk about quietness, uh, is it medical quietness? Is it, uh, you know, uh, violence? Is that quiet? Uh, it's, it's just a time of nothing happening. Quiet. Because when Elijah gets through, remember in Malachi, everything he got quiet for 400 years. When he dropped that word, was nothing going on. <laughs> That's when you know a prophet has really spoken. It quietens uh, your storms. Better teach Pastor Green in this place. That's what's happened to us because we don't do Sunday school no more. Remember when you went to Sunday school and they had that little uh, board on it for Sunday school? They ain't had no classes. You just met over on the uh, left side of the wall and the number never really changed 20 people. I bet people went to Sunday school and they learned stuff about the books and kings and chronicles and divisions. So all we know now is money cometh, money cometh. I got my gifts, she'll make room for me. But we don't understand anything about kingdoms. But if you understand how the kingdom operates, you must read uh, Samuel. You must read Kings and Chronicles. And you can have an anointing as a king like David and your, your family be tore up from the floor up. Y'all ain't talking to me. I want to say that again. Samuel, Kings and Chronicles. Samuel deals with the prophet. Kings deal with the presidents, the mayors, and the governors. Chronicles is the newsletter. It's the newspaper. It's the New York Times. And every time a king would do something, chronicle would chronicle it and write it down. That's why we get a chance to preach about David's dysfunctional family and make fancy topics out of. How would you like somebody to take all your past and, and, and on the poor pits across America, they keep talking about how you messed up. But we get a chance to dissect David's dysfunction, Ammon and Tamar and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And Absalom, didn't you? Child, they were writing in Kronka. Didn't you know that David's children uh, started rising up against him? Uh, and David, he was so distressed uh, that David even wrote. He said, if y'all going to write, I'm going to write about it. So he writes in Psalm 3, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? And he wasn't even talking about the whole world. He was talking about his own children. And I I've been pastoring long enough to know that many of you are having instant Insurrections in your own family, your own children, mothers against daughter, fathers against son. How are they increase that trouble me? Many there be that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory and the lift of my head. I will not be afraid of 10,000 that have set themselves. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down, and I slept. Sometime when your children rise up, uh, you just need to set the alarm, uh, put the door, or so, whatever you ain't got no alarm, you know what you do. Put the dog at the door, let him bark, uh, uh, bar it with something, and just go to sleep and say, and I will not worry about this another night. Uh, I'm going to lay my burdens, uh, take my burdens to the altar and leave them there. David said, I laid me down and I slept and I woke up and the Lord has sustained me. So we get those chronicles. But here we're going to see when Paul makes it from uh, chapter 2 of Timothy, praying for those in authority. And uh, chapter 3, choosing deacons. Chapter 4 he says, many shall depart from the faith. 1 Timothy 4, if you're tracking me, 1 Timothy 4, I'm just walking you up to exemption from death, right? 1 Timothy 1, he's thinking about leaving Ephesus. 1 Timothy 2, he said, first of all, pray for everybody's in authority. Pray for the national authority. Pray, uh, you know, prayers, intercession. Chapter 3, and then get you some help, some elders and deacons in chapter 3. Chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Timothy 4 and 1, he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... <laughs> Many, <laughs> some shall depart from the faith. They, you know, they, they're going to depart from the faith. They, they used to be faithful, but they're going to depart from being faithful. You can't even give them to show up no more. That's what he said. They're going to depart not only from, see, the, the devil is subtle. He first gets you departing from being faithful to praying to God. Then you start departing from your church. Then you start departing from the faith and you in a whole nother religion. He's working on you in stages, setting you up, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But then you get the uh, chapter 5. He tells you how to treat, uh, you know, uh, 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 elders in 5 and 1 and all the rules of that. But let's head towards 6 because uh, uh, that's where we want to go. We want to go with this exemption here 
from death and perhaps we'll look at a little Ezekiel and I'm going to call it a day and I'm going to pray for some folk that's at death's door. And I'm not talking about there in the ICU, but the enemy think he has just stolen and killed everything. But healing is about to be released. The trouble that you're having, there shall, like you have never experienced before, all of that is about to be over. So let's pick it up in verse number 16. 1 Timothy 6 and 16. We'll pick it up there. 1 Timothy 6 and 16. This is loaded. I may need an usher to give me a cloth from reading this because this is, this, is this is the one. After he tells you to fight the good fight of faith in verse 12, to lay hold on eternal life, watch this. Matter of fact, let's go to verse 15. It talks about the king of kings. Let's go back. One more verse. Let's go back. One more verse. One help us, uh, hurt us to go back. Uh, to go uh, verse uh, 15. <laughs> uh, you want to be the king of kings? Let's go back 14. Uh, all this good. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I give you the charge of the sight of God who quickeneth all things. Just type in, it's about to happen quickly. Quickeneth all things. And before Christ Jesus, even who was before Pontius Pilate and witnessed a good confession. He, before, he was before Pontius Pilate and he witnessed a good confession. And even Pilate said about the one I'm about to talk to, I find no fault in him at all. You know, people can find no fault and still crucify you. <laughs> they can find nothing on you and still won't hire you, still don't like you. You can be doing everything right, can't find nothing. They thirst all over. And they, you know, I hope you don't ever really believe your press for real because, I mean, Jesus showed us what the world would do to somebody that's all that. At the end of the day, when his wife had a dream, and said, do not touch that man. I, I, I promise you, Pilate. Pilate didn't have enough courage, beat him with cat and nine tails, many stripes, brought him before the people, asked the people, you got on one hand, here's Barabbas, deranged, and you got Jesus, which one do you want? <laughs> the people always, dull of hearing, give us Barabbas. Now, come on, you're smarter than me. So before Jesus died, if they chose Barabbas over Jesus, there are going to be some folks that don't have half the anointing you got, and they're going to prefer them. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Before Pontius Pilate, who confesses uh, a good confession. Now watch this. That you would keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's about to get good here. I know we're laying some tracks. Which in his time, type in his time, which in his times, because every administration have times, right? Uh, former President Trump had his time, but he's still going up to Coleman like it's still his time. Dude, it ain't your time no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, every minister have their time. You ain't got to be hating on nobody. We've seen the time. I've seen the time of all robbers. I've seen the fire of, of Fred Price. I, I've seen the time of some other men. Just wait. Your time is in his hand. But this is the time that's his times. It, this is not the time that we need to be dependent on backslidden atheists that don't have a clue what's going on. This is his time. Jacob will have their times of trouble, and they will see trouble as a nation like they've never seen before. But right now, in the United States of America, it's our time. And when, we, when it's our time, we've experienced the bountiness of God, the plenty of God, the prosperity of God. We've done mission, but now that we are going through trouble, we don't know how to survive in peace. Perilous times, which in his times, please watch these words. He shall show. It's about to be a showdown. That's what Elijah. Don't you love them showdowns? Pay per view, boxing. The spirit of Elijah was a show. They went up to Mount Carmel. There were those the prophets of Baal. He said, everybody that's on that side, call on your God. You know the story. Fill the trenches with water and say, let the God that answers with fire, let, let him be God. All of the Baal, prophets of Baal, they began <laughs> to call upon their God. 
Elijah said, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's on the journey. Maybe he's doing something crazy. But when Elijah called on his God, God answered with fire, burned up the water out of the altar. And with all those miracles going on, he still got depressed. Some of you, you ain't got no reason to be depressed. God done did so much for you, and you're just going through a season right now. It's just a time of heaviness. It's not a lifetime. It's just a season. But in his times, he shall show. Who is the blessed? I love this because you're going to see it. And only potentate, the king of kings and the lords of lords. Only. Next verse for me. Who only. Now he done mentioned twice. The word only twice. Do I need to go back over it? I'm in a teaching mode. Let's go back one more verse. In his times. When it's his administration. When it's time for him to be Lord. He will show who is the blessed. And the only potentate. And the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. Who only. Here we go. Please, if you've been sleeping over the last 15 months, wake up right now. Who only has immortality? He's the only one out of all the kings, all the countries, China, Japan, India, Russia, Putin. Come on, Biden we love. He's the only one who only has immortality. But where is this? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach. That immortality is hidden in the light. The immortality is not hidden in an x-ray light, in a CAT scan. That immortality or exemption from death is hidden in the light. He is the light of the world. And once you bring the light, which is the highest form of light, is the glory of God. When the glory of God starts rising, it kills everything that's trying to kill you. He hid it in the light, which no man can approach it to, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, Amen. Now, really, look like he uh, ends the chapter right there, right? He said, I'm through with that, but if you want to keep on chasing money, he said, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you some next verse. Uh, I charge those that are rich in this world to be not high-minded. <laughs> if money is what you're after, keep going after it. Uh, if, you, if you're still chasing cheese and you have the salary and not purposes, he threw with that. He will say, until you start chasing the light of God like Paul did when he got knocked off his horse, saw the light, went a whole other direction, then money won't even matter. Now, please, let me have verse 16 out of the Amplified. Lord, I'm asking you for an anointing as I get ready to close that will come out of the glory. In April, people are filing their taxes on the 15th, and they're looking through all their records for a way to have the benefits of tax exemption. Give me some kind of exempt. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm, I'm a father. I got children. Ta tax exemption. We're all looking for an exempt. But what somebody failed to tell us, that the highest kind of exemption that can be given cannot even be given out of a natural country. It has to come from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's the thing that we're dealing with the most. Watch this. Who only, who alone, who alone has immortality? Can we just deal with mortality versus immortality for a moment? Can I just show you a mystery and not at a funeral? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, then shall be brought to pass that death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For thank God that that mortal that corrupt shall take on incorruption and mortal 
shall take upon immortality. Do you mind me prophetically releasing right now the anointing of immortality that you while the direction of this earth may God circle your body with a spirit of, of not just being mortal. You will not be just mortal anymore. Death is swallowed up in victory because when, immort when mortality engulfs and invades your body when mortality, when you're just living for everything that's mortal and human, you become susceptible to death. If life is just about sports and school and games, uh, my friend, that's mortality. But when you shake off, corrupt shall put on incorruption. Mortal shall put on immortality. Maybe nobody told you, you do not have to wait uh, until you die to dress up uh, in immortality. This is what happened uh, to Daniel when he went in the lion's den. He went in the den as, as a mortal man. But by the time he got to praying, he slipped into the clothes of immortality. This is what happened to the three Hebrew boys. They went in the fire as mortal men. But when they put their clothes of immortality on, the fire could not harm them. Who alone has immortality? What do you mean immortality on the screen? In the sense, now we're talking about your senses, right? In the sense, what you see, what you taste, what you feel, what you hear. One of the things that COVID does is it kills a couple of your senses. There are people talking about, I can't smell anything. I can't taste anything. That means two thirds of your senses have been killed. But I announce to you, you're about to get your taste back. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is still good. You're about to get your smell back. You can smell the fragrance of worship, uh, the incense. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let your worship begin to rise. Who alone has immortality? In the sense, I can't believe this. Read it with me. Say it out loud. Type it in. In the sense of exemption from every kind of death. I'm going to drop the mic right there. I don't know what's going to happen uh, to your next door neighbor. I don't know uh, what's going to happen uh, to the next county. I don't know what's going to happen uh, to the next state. Uh, I don't know that what's going to happen to the next business. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the next preacher in the next church uh, and the next man and woman, husband and father, boy and girl. But I announce today a death exemption over you in the name hallelujah singers are getting ready I don't know whatever you're hearing whatever you want to do yes 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 who alone has immortality in the sense of exemption exemption from every kind of death and lives in the unapproachable unapproachable life whom no man has ever seen or can see unto him be honor and glory forever now for the nations the prophet Ezekiel saw something in chapter 47 and there was a river that started and it started rising at the altar that river started rising to the ankles to the knees we'll pick it up in ezekiel 47 verse 11 12 and he will say that everything that passed through that place began to live 
the mire places thereof and the marsh places shall be given to salt. You are the salt. In every miry place, he's bringing you out of the muck and the mire. Verse number 12, we might as well keep on going. And by the river that was rising, by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat whose leaf shall not fade neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed those trees was going to produce fruit and it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months can I take the liberty to speak to the next six months of your life can I speak to August can I speak to September in your October and your November in your December that there will be fresh fruit growing every month you will not succumb to the headaches you will not come to the unemployment fresh fruit Just go ahead and start. I, I just go ahead and, to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invincible, Invisible, the only God, the honoring forever.
and it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they were issued out of the sanctuary the Tony in a few more months they're saying that those that have taken vaccination eight months later they will start issuing out more vaccines am I right but they will be issuing them out from the sanctuary we're in trouble if we don't understand what we have issues of blood uh, we need to touch the hem of his garment there was a woman that had an issue there is a woman uh, right now with issues there's hemorrhaging uh, there's something going on in your reproductive system and God is killing you from the inside out now there are those that desire to have children cannot have children uh, and you're going to specialists but I feel healing going on uh, even in your womb uh, I send the word into your womb and the rivers were flowing it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months why why because of where they were why because they were perfect no why because their waters they were issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine there is medicine in your praise there is medicine in your voice there is healing for the nations uh, can I have the next verse and we'll go to the amplified Bible of that Thus saith the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby you shall inherit the land according to the 12 tribes of Egypt. In other words, he is saying when that water gets the flowing in the sanctuary, there will not be a family. There will not be anybody named in your family that shall not be covered with healing in the name of Jesus. Can I have the Amplified Bible of verse 12? And we're going to call it a day and we're going to thank God for that exemption you'll find the same thing in Revelation 22 Paul would say John would write I saw something and there was a river a crystal river and it flows in the there was a river that went down both sides of the street and there was a tree and the leaves on the tree was for healing for the nations, healing for the counties, healing for the cities, healing for the families, uh, healing for the schools, healing uh, for your boulevard, healing for your home. I'm asking God, let that glory begin to rise in the name of Jesus. And on the banks of the river, on both sides, there shall grow all kinds of trees for food, and their leaves shall not fade. And neither shall their, their fruit fail. Watch this. Neither, neither, neither shall their fruit fail. Watch this phrase. To meet the demands. Whatever demands are on you. Some of you got all kind of stress on your job. Whatever the man is, the demand on your life. This anointing is going to help you to meet what's demanded of you. You have demanded to take care of your children as single parent. You have demand. Some of you have been uh, given a new job, but you didn't know it was going to be that demanding. What I'm releasing is the healing that will help you to meet every demand. Every month, every month. Uh, I've been watching this for 36 years here as a pastor. 26 married and, and watching there are demands as a father that I cannot meet those demands I cannot always meet I mean new job for you I can't always what helps me to meet those demands every month I got to look and make sure I got enough to meet the demands to keep the lights on and I want to tell you it's not because I got degrees behind my name the only reason I'm ever to meet those demands is because of the healing that's flowing in this place because of the river that's flowing. And I want to tell you, in the next 10 minutes, as we get ready to close, I want you to get, I could call it 
a rising sea, but really what it's called is a resurrection. That things, the glory of God is getting ready to exempt you. There are going to be some things asked that everybody else in your office going to be asked to do, but you will not because there will be an exemption. There's something about your worship that's an exempt. So you want to call this an exemption. Every kind of your children are exempt from being killed and fail. An exemption from death. Every kind of, not just COVID, every form of death. Get that seed in your hand, an exemption. Death exemption. You know, when God talks, sometimes he talks in 3D. Was, is, and is to come. I may be talking about something that the enemy is planning to do this week, but you're exempt from that. Things are happening quick. You better pay attention here. I, I put my notes down early here. God, someone to release an exemption. This is, a, this is not April 15th. This is from the King of Kings in the city of Birmingham. Election, mayors, councils, and they all have plans. But he only, he alone can make us exempt from all that's going on in the world. There's a number on the screen, 73256. I want you to prepare right now. Get your tithe in your right hand. And I want you to get a seed in your left hand. Some of you, you know what I'm talking about. You got what I call Jacob's trouble. You are facing stuff like you have never seen before in your life. But you're getting ready to shine like you have never shone before. I pray that right now that God will send Michael, the warring angel, to begin to war for all those things that have been held up. To begin to war when you're on the interstates driving, flying. May God send Michael who shall stand up at that time. And may God begin to reveal through his prophets, his plans, and his purposes. And the prophetic word that I'm releasing over you today. It's healing first, but exemption from death, every form of it, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the sun of righteousness rise with healing in his wing. And all the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. Blessing, honor, and glory. Glory forever. Take us out forever. Give him a glory.